Well, hello boys. This is your great uncle, Jeffrey. I'm down here in California today. And when I heard from your grandmother, Elizabeth, that you were very interested in competition stories, I thought to myself, maybe I'll share a little bit of a personal story with them uh, today. But before I do that, uh, and share my story about competition with you, I wanted to connect with you and remind you just who I am, really. I'm your, your father's uncle, or your great uncle, and I'm the brother of your grandmother, Elizabeth. And we live with my wife down here in California. And I'm in a field where I, I work, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a minute, but the reason I'm in this field today is because the last time we were together was up in Seattle when your parents and you two boys were visiting Grandma uh, Elizabeth and Grandpa David and Grandma Miriam was there as well and my wife Rosa was there with us and we had a wonderful dinner out on the the grass in their yard and we also had a chance I remember very clearly that we we were digging around in the soil together and we were looking at the soil and talking about how the soil was looking and how it works and everything. And I wanted to just share with you a little bit about my own work before to make that connection with you boys uh, clear so you understand what I kind of do. Then, then we'll talk about the competition story. But I'm in a field here and you can see this is actually what we call a cover crop. The farmers that I work with, they will grow a, a crop of different plants like this and they'll add it into the soil or they'll leave it on the soil surface to add what we call organic matter or plant material back into the soil. That has lots of different benefits. It feeds, it provides food for the soil microorganisms and it also helps the soil to function better. And later on, I'm going to take a shovel of soil from this field here. And then I'll show, show you it's another field that's managed by farmers a little bit differently. And we can see the differences in the soil. So let me take a shovel. I'll put my microphone down here. I don't really need this here because I have a, another microphone on. But I wanted to show you some of the things that I do sometimes with my job there in interviewing people. So I'll put the microphone down. And I'm just going to take a shovel full of soil right here and then I'll bring it over there where the camera is and you can see this more clearly. Already I can see some very nice things in this soil. I, I got a smile on my face because I'm very happy to show you this here. But let me take this shovel and then I'll put it on the ground over there and I'll compare it with another uh, field of soil there. Okay? Then later on I'm going to drive back home this morning and I'm going to watch some basketball games, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about a competition story from my home there when I get back there. So I'll do that after we show you the soils. All right. Before I go over to the other field, though, let me just show you. This was the field that I was standing in there. And I want to show you right there where that grayish plant material is on the soil surface there. That's what we call the residue. That's actually just dried up plant material that is really protecting the soil and it's providing food for all the organisms in the soil. So that's the soil that, that I'm working with right here with the plant material. And now I'm going to show you, I'll take the camera over to another field where you can see a big difference, I think. Okay, now I'm in a different field here, and I think you can already see some pretty, pretty big differences here in how this soil looks here. All right, it's kind of chunky, first of all. Let me take a shovel of soil right out of the surface like I did over in my other field there, and then I'll put it on the ground there, and you can see the differences, okay? 
So we took just two surface soils there, and I'm going to ask you to make some comparisons here with me. Now, I'm not sure this is going to be all that easy for you to see, but to me, looking at this, these two soils, here's the first one, the soil that I was standing in the field with all the plants in, and there's the second one, the one that I just uh, dug that shovel full of soil from a minute ago. And to me, I can see a number of really big differences in these soils. Let me just start with the one we we did first of all. It's kind of hard to see because I don't have a good lens on the camera and the sun is kind of hard, but look at this. Look at this layer right here. See, that's all the organic material, all the leaves and stems of plants that were in the, growing in the field and they're now breaking down on the surface of the soil. They're actually protecting the soil. So there's already a lot of that stuff. We don't see any of that in this other soil, the second soil there. There's not this surface layer of material there. The other thing I think it's kind of neat to show you is look at all the roots, all the plant roots that are in this one that are just in there and they're very nicely holding this soil together. It's kind of crumbly, all right? I can just, with my hands here, I can break it apart. Look at that. All those nice roots in there. So we're trying to get more roots in the soil. You may not be able to see it here, but there are also more worms in this soil. We know that because we've measured them. We've actually counted them and we have a lot of science experiments about these kind of things here. The other thing about this one over here, it tends to be harder. It's much more I can't squeeze that apart or I can't pull it apart. It looks a little bit lighter too, doesn't it? This soil on the surface looks darker, to me anyway, and we've again, we've measured these kind of things there. So these are some of the things that I do in my work, uh, and it comes back to what we were all talking about that day up in Seattle when we were there with you boys there. All right. So now I hope I've given you an idea about what my work is like. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pack up the camera and all the gear here, and I'm going to head back home. I want to watch some of those basketball games today. And then I want to tell you a story about competition. I hope you'll enjoy it. All right, we'll see you in about an hour. Well, hello again, boys. Uh, as you can see, I'm here in our living room in our home in Kingsburg, California, and I happen to have on the basketball game. I really enjoy watching basketball games, and uh, let, me, let me turn it off here for a minute here, and let me, let me share with you uh, the story that I wanted to, to talk to you about after I learned from your grandmother, Elizabeth, that uh, you're interested in competition stories. The story about competition that I'd like to share with you today happened way, way back when I was uh, much younger. When I was in high school, uh, I went and my sister, Elizabeth, your grandmother, and uh, our younger brother, Paul, we all went to the same high school. It was called Taft, T-A-F-T. It was named after one of our United States presidents, Taft High School. And when I was in high school, every fall and winter, I would play on the basketball game, on the basketball team. And then in the springtime, I would be on the track running team. So these were two kinds of 
team competition uh, activities that I took part in when I was a high school student. The particular story I want to share with you happened when I was a senior in my very last year of high school and it was the very last game of the entire basketball season that we had. Our team had been practicing with our coach all season long for many, many weeks. And we had an opportunity to become the league champions. If we won the last game of our season, we would have had more wins than any other team in our league or our conference. Maybe there were 12 teams, I think there were, together. And to be league champion was really a big thing. It was a very nice honor and recognition for the good play that we, we had had that year. Well, in the last game, we were going to play our arch rival, the team that we really wanted to win against. We wanted to beat them very much. They were the team from Reseda High School. That was about, oh, maybe 12 miles away, I guess, from where our high school was. And on their team, they had two very good players. Both of them went later on to play in college at the University of California at Los Angeles. So that was a very big, you know, very wonderful team that they became college players on. One of the players was named Greg Lee, and he was probably the best player in our league. And we were playing against him and his teammate, Gary Franklin, in this very last game. I can remember how excited we were about the game. And I remember the coach telling me, he said, Jeff, you're going to guard Greg Lee. And I said, okay, I want to do that. I want to guard him so that he can score as many points as he normally does. And as the game was going, we went back and forth. One team would score a basket, and then the other team would score a basket. It was a very close or very tight game that we played, both teams. And as I remember very clearly, the last few seconds of the game were extremely exciting. One of the players on their team, Gary Franklin, made a shot that was spectacular. It was wonderful. He was falling back like this, and the basketball went right in the hoop, and he got two points for it. That meant that they were winning by one point at that point. We had one last chance to make a basket and win with two points to beat them. We came down the court dribbling the ball. I remember passing the ball over to Larry D'Angelo, another player on my team. And then Larry passed it over to another player on our team. His name was Glenn Farrell. They were both very tall. They were actually probably taller than your dad, Alex, there. They were big, tall players on our team. And just about at the end of the game, Glenn Farrell on our team knew he had to make a basket or try a shot. So he took a shot, and everyone in the whole gymnasium was watching that, game, that ball. They were waiting to see, would it go in or not? And it didn't go in the basket. We lost the game. We lost the game by one point, And Reseda ended up winning and becoming the league champions. We were kind of sad about that. But I think we knew that we played our very best. We competed our very best. And we were quite proud of the way we did things. Sure, we would have wanted to win, but we didn't win that night there. That was a story of competition that I still remember to this very day. And it's kind of funny because a couple of months ago, 
One of the players on my team, who was the brother of Larry D'Angelo, this guy's name was Harry D'Angelo. He was a good friend of mine, uh, and he later became a professor at a university. He, had, he must have looked up my email address somehow on the computer, and he sent me an email note one day, just a couple months ago, and he said, Jeff, how are you doing? Do you remember me from all these years? And I wrote back, of course I remember you, Harry. And we exchanged emails, and it's kind of a nice reconnection for us. Well, in one of the emails that he sent to me, he asked me about that final game. <laughs> that last basketball game we had when we were in high school. And Harry also wrote a letter, an email letter, to Greg Lee. Now we're all very old, all right? You know, this was 50, 60 years, or almost 60 years old ago. And Greg Lee wrote back and he described the game and all the detail that we all remember. And I wrote back to Harry and I said, well, that's an interesting recollection or memory of the game. My memory was this. We just wanted to beat those guys. <laughs> we wanted to win the game. So that was my story of competition to you, you boys there. I hope you understand and, and appreciate it. It was a very uh, memorable and meaningful uh, event or, or game in my life there. But, you know, there are lots of different ways that people have competition. Sports are one way. Music, there are music competitions that are also very nice. But there are also idea competitions. People coming up with good ideas and the best ideas that will solve a problem or will help people to do something in certain ways. And sometimes I guess that competition, the way I look at it, it can be a very good thing because it, it makes us bring our very best in, in our lives. And I think that, you know, by practicing, that's a part of preparation for being in competition by getting better at something and dedicating ourselves to something that's uh, very important. I think those are very good elements of competition. So I hope uh, my story is interesting for you. I'm grateful to my sister and your grandmother, uh, Grandma Elizabeth, for uh, reminding me that you're interested in competition stories too. And I hope at some point, if you're coming through California, that you and your family will visit us here where we live. Goodbye. We love you. Take care.